Logins versus users. Now these two can be quite confusing, but it's really quite simple. If you have a look at the info on the screen right now, a login will grant us access to SQL Server. So that's a server level instance. We can then map that login to a user that grants access to the database. We grant server level permissions to the login, such as view server state, for example. Both logins and users can be either type of account and a login can be associated to many users once they're mapped. It's that simple really, so let's jump in, let's have a look exactly how it works. So here we're gonna create a login to SQL Server. Now remember, a login is what grants us server level access. So we create our logins under security and here under logins, and then we can map that to a user in let's say AdventureWorks 2019 and we can map those to a user. Now remember, server level logins is where we can grant server level permissions to them, like view server state, if we want to grant them access to activity monitor, or we want them to the user to be able to do server level roles. Now, there's two ways to create a login. We can create it this way, by right clicking on logins and creating it there, or we can use the code here. Now we're going to create a SQL Server authenticated one, so it's authenticated via SQL. In a company environment, you might use Windows authentication, which is authenticated via Windows. But it's worth checking, if you go up to SQL Server here, go to Properties, go to Security, and check that your SQL Server is configured for both types of authentication. If it's just Windows, you won't be able to create a SQL login. So let's run this, so we can see down here, it should be blank, which it is, there's nothing there. So if we run that, expand, and we can see there's a SQL login there. Now from here, what I can do is I can connect using SQL Server Authentication. I'm going to type my password in. And down here, we've connected using that SQL ID, that SQL using SQL login. So this one is using Windows authentication, this one's my SQL login. So let's shrink this down a minute. Now using this ID, I can expand this and I can see everything in there, but I haven't been granted permission. I'll show you, I haven't been granted permission to anything. I haven't got access to anything in SQL Server. So shrink this down. So if I expand this, I don't have access. So the question is, how do we grant access to a login or to a user? First off, let's say this login is just to view the state of the server, or we might want it to do specific roles, in which case we'd use our sysadmin user ID and we'd log in, look at the SQL login access, and we could grant it sysadmin access to any of these server roles here, or we can look in securables and we could grant it specific permissions such as view server state. We might want to be creating, we might just want it to create availability groups or just create endpoints. So let's close that and we're going to grant view server state to it. Then we might alter the role and say it can create. Now down here I can now, if I go here, new database, let's call it test. I can create that under my SQL login. And there it is. So up here, let's get rid of this. Now, what we'd like to do, we want to map this SQL login to a user in AdventureWorks. So currently, there's no user in there called SQL login. So I'm going to create a user for that login. There's two ways to do that. We can go down here, right click, go to user mappings, map that there and grant it to any role we want to, or just leave it in the public role. Cancel that. We're going to do it via code and we're going to run that. And we can see now that it should have access. which it does. 
However, we haven't granted any permissions. So although it has access, we could expand this. Let's shrink this down a little bit so it's easier to see. Can't see any of the tables, can't see any store procedures, because all it has at the minute is connecting access to it. So we need to assign it some permissions. Assign it to a role is the most likely course of action that we'll do. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to do it this way first. So I'm going to open up properties, go to user mapping, look at VentureWorks, and I'm going to assign it to the DB data reader role. That means I can read anything, but I can't write to it. So I couldn't update, I couldn't delete, I couldn't insert any rows, I can just read tables. So we'll do that for now. So if I create a new connection here, we can see down here my user ID is SQL login. So I'm going to select start from, and in here I should be able to see my tables. Let's refresh that, which I can. And human resources.employee, I can now select from it if I was in AdventureWorks, which I can. However, I can't update. So let's, let's try and update. So I might update human resources.employee and I might want to set the national insurance number, national ID number to equal one, two, three, four, One, two, three, four, where is NCI equals one. So if I run that under my SQL login, I wouldn't be able to do it, which I can't because I haven't got access to do that. So what we can do is then we can then further add it to the writer role. So we can do it this way, where we alter the role and we add a member, and then it should allow me to do it, which it does. Now let's say that we want to remove access for a user. Let's close this down. We could simply drop them from a particular role. So in this case, that person would no longer be able to write or update, but they'd still be able to read if that was suitable. Or we can simply just drop the user. So then this person now, if I try to refresh these tables, we don't have access. So we no longer are able to do that. So let's rewind a minute. Let's create this user again. And let's say we want to assign permissions just to specific objects or even just certain schemas. Then what we can do is we'll create this user again. And we can see down here it's got, yep, still there. SQL login is there. So now currently, if we look down here, we shouldn't have access to anything. So we're not in any roles or anything. Um, so we right click under the user, go to properties. And remember this isn't server level permission. So we can look in securables and it's the securables tab just here. We can go to search and I could sign permissions to, the, to these types. So I might just sign it up, just to sign it permissions to store procedures. I might just assign it permissions to tables or views. Alternatively, what I could do, I could go all objects belonging to certain schemas. So let's say, for example, um, just the human resources table, human resources schema. So then I can look all the way down here and I can say, do you know what, um, human resources employee table, I want it to read every other table, but I want it to be able to update this table. So we could apply that could also add it to the reader role so we can read everything. So if we connect again down here, this is our SQL login. Let's refresh this. And we will do a 
humanresources.employee. So I'll update that. So we can update that. But if I want to, uh, let's have a look at another table. Person.dress. I might want to update person.dress. Set address line to equal that where address ID equals one and it wouldn't let me update because I haven't got permission on that table so that's how we can be really granular about what permissions we assign to what objects and by using roles and specific object permissions